team included Beverly Truesdale Fortune and Henry, who outdid themselves when the printer crashed and they picked up speed. The book, this book is the committee's gift to you, and we hope you, you enjoy it to the utmost. The fascinating similarity that came um, to light as I read the bios from all of you were the long-term careers you've had and some are still holding. Uh, current and future generations will not enjoy this as part of their lives, which is a sad commentary. Um, in the 50s, the image of marriage with family and home with a white picket fence for most Americans. Well, female focus knowledge in the areas of teaching and business skills and always, always looking toward home and family. Women role, women's roles in the workplace um, I'm having trouble because I, I can't see really well because of the lighting, I'm sorry. Uh, women's roles in the workplace is stated uh, so well in Janet McMillan's bio. I, I'd like to just quote her. Jane graduated from UCR and also from Gold Hall School of Law. When she passed the bar, she learned that most private law firms were not hiring women. Um, of course, no, it, no one ever uh, mentioned that, and no one ever said so. She moved to Sacramento to work with the legal staff of the State Board of Equalization. The under, unwritten rule of women in the workplace was alive and well in the 50s. Here's a view from a different perspective. Classmate Marilyn Morris Coffinger graduated from ASU with an MA degree in education. She entered the Air Force in 63 through the OTC through OTC as a second lieutenant. Her assignments and duties are detailed in her bio. She transferred to Northern Air Force Base in San Bernardino in 1979 as deputy base commander. At the same time, the Air National Guard was moved from Ontario to Norton. Some of our classmates, Jim Monk, Jimmy Thomas, Tom Whippen, Chuck Marietta, and Jean Rink were a part of the unit and Marilyn would have been their boss, with none of them realizing it, I'm sure. <laughs> she retired from the Air Force in 1989 with the rank of Brigadier General, and now lives in Scottsdale, Arizona. We didn't locate Marilyn until Dominic sent kind of a crusty email to the following <laughs> website. She had a, a prior commitment this evening and was very disappointed she couldn't be here. Uh, the bios also show that our class is traveling in all directions and in all ways, all over the U.S., with Alaska being the most often mentioned state, as well as um, uh, lots of travel overseas. Genealogy is a strong interest. Cruises also are frontrunners, with our own Sylvia Farber Briskin totaling 60 cruises. Oh, with does anyone suppose that that you get frequent cruise miles? Yeah. <laughs> I want to tell you something about um, some of the men and uh, just just some brief highlights. Dick Fleming with his career in the FBI. Kim Fresnel, ten careers based in the in the aviation industry. Ernest Green, an executive chef and culinary educator. Dr. George Harper, delivering the first test tube baby in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Wolfo, who was not only a charter student at UCR, but a charter faculty person at UC Irvine. And there's lots more where these came from. We hope you thoroughly enjoy this book. And, Dominic? <laughs> I would like to introduce the Codfather. <laughs> he has something to say to me. I give you Don Harlow. <laughs> the committee asked me to tell you about the centerpieces. Centerpieces are available tonight for a nominal fee of $5. If you're interested, see my boys. Victoria and I are ready, and Angelo comes with you. You probably know them better by Ken Penny and Dennis Timmons. <laughs> They'll make you an offer you can't refuse. 
Now I want to introduce to you the gentleman who's been an airline pilot, successful airline pilot. And I know that because I overheard him talking to a young lady a while ago, maybe an older lady, but he says, to her, have you ever flown United? And she says, no, but I'd like to try. <laughs> Don Wright.
And of course, there was um, Lake Gregory. We weren't supposed to swim out of the hard way, but I fell in a couple of them. <laughs> and um, let's see, and then our own private swimming pool that uh, Dick had and Tom Webb and I had, that was called the Salmon River. Yeah. <laughs> the tide <laughs> and uh, Don, as you mentioned, there was uh, fun places that we used to take the girls in the back seats of our cars at Gravity Hill. That was on the way up to Lake Arrowhead, I think you might remember. A little side road that appeared to go uphill, whether it did or not, I'm not sure, but we would park the car, take it out of here, and the car would roll up the hill, and the girls would eat. I think that was pretty something. John Snur and I were going to go over there and run the uh, levels on it once the week we did. But it worked. <laughs> Thrill Hill, I think June and Barbara remember that. Put them in the back seat of the car and drive over Thrill Hill. I didn't make it in the Rumble Seat. In the Rumble I didn't get to go. June said she did. <laughs> oh, maybe if I was up. Okay. <laughs> you get this hill going about 70 miles an hour and you get zero gravity and the girls are screaming, geeking, and raise all kinds of hell and they ask you to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, let's see, we used to go, um, if I remember, some of you remember Green's Mansion in Redmond? I don't know, I remember that one. Uh, we used to take the girls over there at night and they'd scream and raise hell. <laughs> Mr. Green, as I find out, uh, was an eccentric old millionaire who owned all, all the orange groves in that area. And he decided he was going to build a house high enough that he could see uh, the ocean. Well, he built a nice foundation for it, but it didn't work. I apparently before I could finish it. So we used to fly out there and have bonfires and fun. <laughs> Benedict's yeah. Castle, out in Orange Grove. We got out in Orange Grove with the girls and yeah. scare them and whatever else. <laughs> <laughs> I think we ever did get it in the castle, but you know, I guess that's probably fortunate. Uh, driving through um, San Bernardino, Redlands, you probably remember some of these uh, drive-ins. In Redlands, they had the uh, Huggalos. Remember that? Yeah, maybe you do know. <laughs> in San Bernardino, we had uh, Wallace Ruby. Uh, Ruby's driving in. I didn't remember his name. Uh, Mimi's driving in. Snow's driving in. Probably remember some of those. And uh, I think he had another Ruby's down at uh, Del Mar, I'm not sure. And uh, of course, uh, Coles Corral. Blue bonnets, B and B driving. Remember the Wattenbergers? Yeah. yeah. King driving. Taxis. Yeah. He's still there. Taxis. Yeah. I'm yeah. Yeah. Aren't sold, yeah. but it's still there. Still there. And you still have a car drive right there tonight. Yeah, they do. Wednesday night. Yep. Yeah. Tuck some orange property to drive. Merle's driving. Man, I'm sure there's plenty of others that I've forgotten. There was a, one of the things I remember growing up was an Indian motorcycle shop down on uh, Main Street between 5th and 6th. I never owned an Indian motorcycle, but I thought they were kind of neat when I was in high school. There was a lot of automobile uh, dealerships, and they were all downtown. Bader Motors, Kaiser Brasher, I think he might have even sold Nash, I'm not sure. Don Thompson used cars. You probably remember Don Thompson. Well, his dad yeah, actually had a used car like uh, Rubido Motors, DeAndre Chevrolet, Elvis and Julie, Kennedy Pontiac, Warren Anderson Ford, um, Givington Clay, Lincoln Mercury, the Nash dealer, I don't remember who owned that. And they're all beautiful downtown Riverside, right? That's an auto ball thing. They didn't know about that. Friday, uh, Saturday night, preview night at the Fox Theater. If you're allowed to stay up past 12 o'clock and you can stay awake, you might get a glimpse of a real movie star. I never saw them. <laughs> they told me they were there, but that's good enough. They got me in and got my money. Speaking of uh, theaters, you probably remember the Lido, which is down the street from the Fox. The Golden State, which is up the other way from the Fox. Um, the Del Rio. Yeah. Park Avenue uh, has a theater. Yeah. And uh, let's see. There was one other one I can't think. Well, the Arlington Theater, that's right, I'm sorry. And the, uh, of course, the Group O and the Van Buren Dragons. They're all very famous. <laughs> Those of you who uh, lived in Magnolia Center in downtown probably remember 
Friday night roller rink night at the Presbyterian Church parking lot. And uh, I think a lot of us went to that. Jackie Common, Gordon Melania, I remember, and Cheryl, you know, Marguerite. We used to go over there and just terrorize that parking lot. <laughs> and uh, is Jackie here tonight? Did he show up? Um, How about some other goodies? A and W root beer, you remember that? Yeah. Abba's Adams. Oh. Good and plenty. Choo choo beans. Big hunks. Double bubble. How about ten cents for a bag? Big bag. Remember that? Yeah. Boston pies. Big R C cola. Here's one of my first to go nervous bag. Not a bubble in a bottle of Arby's. <laughs> they had their own bottling plant right here in Riverside. Near here, you probably remember that. Tootsie Roll, Butterscotch, Spudnets. They just sell Spudnets anymore. Last but not least, the Poly Nylon Stand Chili Dogs. <laughs> Come to the fifth net, you can try them again. <laughs> How about Red Rider BB Gun? Most of the guys here had Red Rider BB guns or wanted them. Cherry bombs. I remember those. Hearing those go off in the other twenties. Uh, believing in uh, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> Dick Crazy, Gravel Dirty, B.O. Plenty, and their kid Sparkle Plenty. <laughs> Bob Rogers, Dr. Zorkoff, buying a pack of Lucky's for 25 cents. <laughs> Remember what LSMFT stood for? Yeah, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike means buying a pack. I think they used it. <laughs> <laughs> Blue suede shoes, the dress code for every day for the poor. Karachis, white sweat socks, white t shirts. Hip hugger Levi's with the button, the uh, belt that was cut off, and some of them fell down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, those are some of the things I remember. For the girls, there were peggers, power pushers, tabby, tabby things, penny loafers, hoop skirts, pleated skirts. I mean, bra I never had one I never had, uh, never hand knitted Argyle socks. I only had one pair of those. I think we broke up before she finished the other <laughs> Mini skirts. Uh, there's some things like Baker Oil, Henry Harris's dairy. I remember Mrs. Harris delivering milk to the school to read in the morning. Thorson's Market, you remember that? I guess Donnie Wicker does. He lived right next door to us. Oh, Magnolia. And then for the car buffs, all of us car buffs, we had hubcaps called flickers and moans, glass packs and smitty mufflers, lower the skirts, decrone hood and trunks, and of course the mandatory dual pipes that made noise so you could be seen and heard. <laughs> One other thing that came to mind was the Cheat Sheet Club. Remember the Cheat Sheet Club right across on the Fox Theater? Yeah. There was one in Palm Springs, too. I think it was on Buzz White Castle hamburgers. And I guess it was later bought out by the Dolphins. Greyhound Bus Station on one side, Continental Trailways on the other. Remember? Wow. Press Enterprise and the Cal Electric offices were down on the corner of Asian Market. Up on 7th and Main was the uh, Somerset House on the corner from uh, the Mates Cafeteria. Yeah. That was a famous cafeteria of Riverside. Mm -hmm. Owned by this James Bentville. This is Mates. Across the street from that was Charlie's Magic Shop in the Mission Inn. Remember that? Old Charlie used to show us all kinds of tricks. But the trick, he didn't show you how it worked. <laughs> Banks, drug stores, mm -hmm. you know, the corner, Sears Roebuck, the corner board, chasing candies. These are all on this, remember? That's when Sears and Roebuck had a partner, Roebuck. 
City Hall of Riverside was right next to the police station on Orange and uh, 7th. Library was across the street from that. In its auditorium was one block down. Of course, that was Friday night. High night. We all went there. Most of us, anyway. Yeah. Of course, next door to that was the YWCA. Uh, I never knew much about that. <laughs> never was anybody. <invited. laughs> On the other street was Manny Mo and Jack, the Pet Brothers. Tappy Hotel, Riverside Blueprint. I used to work there. Um, out on uh, Park Avenue was the R&B record shop, where we got my uh, first rhythm and blues records. Very nice. Out on 8th Street was Raymond Dickerson, uh, International Harvester, Al Burnett, Sports Cars, remember him? Peter West was the favorite salesman, I remember. <laughs> University of California, Citrus Experiment Station for smudging. <laughs> we loved it. We got a half a day off from school to go home and take a shot. Right. <laughs> I won't say tell the joke. Okay, uh, remember Starkweather's uh, sporting goods store next to Holton's Barbershop? Across the street from that was uh, one of Treasure's uh, sporting goods store. I used to work there part time. Around the corner of Citizens Bank, Sweet, Aerials, Aerials, Red Wing Shoes, Grouse's Grouse. You got a whole list of places there. Walk through town and remember all those neat places. Another place I remember is the Huddle. Oh, we used yeah. to have a little house down on uh, Main Street where we'd all get together and have fun. Yeah. Skip Fort Ice, Taco Tia, the ice house up on 14th by the river tracks. Food and machinery testing their tanks. They built tanks for the Army and they test them down. Fairmont Park splashing down on the lake. I thought that was really neat. And uh, the end of fairgrounds, racetrack. Probably some of you remember Mrs. Burkett's horse rental barn down in Santa River Bottom. John Schneer and I will never get invited back there. <laughs> and he was John Wayne. <laughs> anyway, we went on to go back. Uh, Fairmont Park Fun Zone. Electric boats, merry-go-round, miniature golf course, fun places. Gaylers, El Sarabi, some other places uh, we used to go eat, copper kettle, country kitchen. Uh, across the street from, well, the rendezvous room, I don't know if you remember that, we're all too young to go there, but it's now called Sire. I think we've been there. <laughs> Sage's Market across the street, Mr. Uh, Sage, Built a nice market with wooden floors and a canvas tent top. I remember that very well. KPRO, remember Joe Pine and Jerry Nickel? Yeah. Sock Ops. Riverside Police Department's motorcycle officers. There was uh, Officer Pratt, Officer Jones, Officer Avila. I was on a first name basis for most of them. <laughs> Evans Ballpark, foot, down at the foot of uh, Rockton, uh -huh. home of the Riverside Dons. I thought that was a neat name. Yeah. It cost 25 cents to get in, and still, <laughs> Jackie Cobb and Gordon and I were still sitting in two minutes. Yeah, 25 cents. One other thing I remember from Central was the fact that on top of the uh, Rockton Hill was the old potato chip factory. That was our run yeah. ship central. We could sneak across the street and go out and bring potato chips because that was the back door and it was all over. <laughs> and uh, we loved it. It's a long gone. Central Junior High School. I loved it. Out at the uh, U.S. Army had a camp on. You probably remember that. Camp Anza. From the March Field to the surplus that somebody bought a C-46 goose lot. Made a house out of it, parked it down at Rubidoux Avenue on the other side of the Grand Avenue. It's still there. There's still somebody still living in it. Uh, TV broke. The things I remember about TV. We first got one. Of course, we used to go down and stand in front of the neighbors and look through the window. We <laughs> used to watch Al Jarvis Maple Leaf Ballroom with Benny White. Yeah. Ernie Kovacs. See that 
of that lake, watch Ernie Kovacs, great show. Around 6 o'clock, I remember dinner time, there was somebody on television network called the uh, Fort Honda. He said there was a turban around, he said, where they probably shoot shooting today. But the organ was beautiful. For a slight amateur hour, remember him? He had actually came to Riverside. There were some people who played the piano for him. Who plugged Fran and all. Tonight's show with Jack Parr. That goes way back. And of course, Eric Sullivan. So on behalf of your Class 53 Reunion Committee and myself, I'd like to uh, hope that you've got some renewed memories of our we were youth and Riverside. We wish you all a very happy Christmas with you.
gang. This is your old uh, schoolmate Dominic Felicetta at our 50th class reunion. Boy, what a good one we had this time. We really had a good turnout. And I want to thank all of you who came because we, we really had a good, a very good uh, reunion this time. Well, I want you all to remember, don't forget to come to our picnics every year at the uh, second Sunday of June. And uh, I would like to say that uh, the most important thing of my life was finding my beautiful wife, the girl of my dreams. I'm still in my starter house with my starter wife. With a career of uh, music for many years, I uh, played in nightclubs and some big bands. Then I finally settled down. And the last few years, I took over my dad's uh, shoe repair business, and I've been there for over 20 years and still working at 68 years old and uh, don't know when I'm going to retire, but soon, I hope. Please. <laughs> but uh, I have uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, helping out on the reunion, and it's been a uh, lot of fun with everyone. And I hope to see everybody at the 55th, and be sure to, to make it. And uh, I don't know what else I'd like to say other than uh, thank you all very much. The website. Oh, and don't forget our Poly High website. It's a, uh, it's ourfamily.com, and you have to contact us to get you on, and it's a lot of fun to stay in contact with everyone. So that's pretty much for my career as a musician and a shoe repairman. That's pretty much what I've done all my life. And I had uh, four wonderful kids, eight grandkids, and one great-grandchild.